Okay, so I'm going to attempt to explain um, how we get this equation. It's to do with a coil rotating in a magnetic field. This is where something or somebody or I know a steam engine or something is going to be uh, providing the energy to rotate the coil and out of that rotation we can induce uh, voltage uh, or an EMF, an electromotive force. Okay, so it comes from really from this equation. Okay, so we're going to take this equation and essentially turn it into that equation. This equation has its own history. It's really an interesting um, how you can how this comes to be as well. It's quite interesting and, and in depth, um, but I'm not going to go into that in this little section. I'm just going to go over how we go from this equation to this equation. So if we start with just thinking about a coil of wire, or sorry, one single loop, okay, with a length that we know and a width that we know, which I'm going to call D for diameter, right? Because it's actually this coil is rotating in a circle like that. So this would be moving down into the page, this end, this page, this part would be moving up into the page. If we just think about um, this one single wire for a second, just this one single wire, and think about what would happen to that. As it moves up, through the field lines, cutting the field lines, it's sweeping through flux in a certain amount of time and therefore it's going to generate a certain amount of EMF. EMF is flux broken per second. It's another way of thinking of it. Okay. But the flux is equal to the flux density times the area that is swept through. So if you sweep through, if you've got a certain length of wire here, and you sweep all the way down there, then you're going to sweep through a certain area, okay, divided by time. Now, um, if you knew this distance that it swept down, S, I'm going to use, a shame it's on the red, I'll do it there, this uh, S there, if you knew that distance, right, and the length, length times distance would be the area swept. So you could also write B length times distance would be the area swept divided by time. Now displacement or the movement down here divided by time is the same as velocity. So we could also write V L V. Right? So that's actually the first useful equation we get to. So now let's start thinking about how fast what's the velocity of this wire would be as it's shot down there at exactly the point when it's here really is the only bit we're thinking about for now when it's at 90 degrees to the normal line of the coil which is perpendicular to the to the coil itself okay so what would its velocity be well if you've got the circumference of a circle if I can spell circumference and divide it by the time you'll get the actual velocity in meters per second at um, a point on the surface of that circle. Okay, So we're looking at this top down but here we're looking at it side on so you can imagine this is whichever way it's turning, it's whizzing around like this and you want to get the actual velocity of this piece right, as it cuts into those field lines at the, when you're getting the peak voltage. Okay, So the circumference is, uh, what is it again? 2 pi r right? 2 pi r over time, okay, and this little chunk here, 2 pi over t, right, is the same as actually 2 pi f r, okay, so we can actually write that the velocity, sorry, velocity is equal to, um, well, that's o I just said that's omega, I think I just said that anyway, that's omega, so we can write the velocity is actually omega r. Okay, so now we know that um, velocity is equal to omega r, and we also know that EMF will be equal to B L, and that's V for velocity. We can sub this in for V. Okay, so I'm just going to write it all out so I don't get lost. Uh, velocity will be equal to omega r. I shouldn't be making that capital really because it's um, it is not. Voltage. It's an easy one to make a mistake with. It's a little v for, for velocity, and we're going to sub that into into v 
BLV, which is going to give us, um, this is for EMF, that actually equals EMF. Okay, so that goes in for that. So we basically get an equation that says EMF will be equal to B L omega R. Okay, B L omega R. But now we need to bear in mind that this was just for one of these wires, right? You've got one wire coming, in this case, out of the page towards us, and another going into the page. Um, and if you use the right hand rule you see that the currents are actually going to add up in this case because of the uh, well that's another story but we'll, we'll come back to that but basically uh, the voltages will also add up okay um, so for two wires two wires you could say that the EMF will be equal to Uh, B L omega and then times two R. Okay. Now, for multiple coils, you'd have to stick in. Uh, okay, so for a multiple of n coils, for n coils, okay, you'd then also have to write in uh, multiply that by n as well. So you've got you're multiplying by n and by two. The, the original term we had here. Okay, so N B L omega times 2R. Okay, now our 2R term is actually the same as D, right? So I could replace that with D. Okay, and then I've got L and D, which is actually L times D is the area here. So to sort of tidy this up, I can get to an equation that number of coils times the flux density times area omega, okay? And that will tell me the EMF produced at maximum, right? The maximum EMF produced, positive or negative, when uh, the, the wire is cutting the field lines, lines at the greatest rate. Okay, so we can give that the term, is it EMF zero? I think it is. Okay, EMF at um, maximum, okay, EMF at maximum that is. And then the EMF at any point, okay, and this is where you'll need to watch another video or have watched it already, can be given by taking the term for the maximum EMF produced by the spinning coil and multiplying it by sine omega t and this sine omega t chunk essentially allows you to in radians discover at what point along this sine curve you're going to be and that, that's another video um, which is worth watching right so I hope you found this useful it explains how we go from this equation to this equation and define some of the terms and some of the thinking behind it if you've got any comments please feel free to make them thanks for watching